Hoffman Tech Tips here. I'm with John West of LC Technologies. John, thank you for joining the program today. Thank you for having us, Matt. How you doing? Doing great. Doing great. Using a little Google Hangout on air. Love leveraging these new technologies. So I was hoping you could educate me, educate my audience on eye tracking. I think I know what eye tracking is but I don't know what eye tracking is so why don't you educate us on eye tracking of course uh, eye tracking Matt is measuring precisely either a subject's gaze point where exactly they're looking um, or measuring the relative eye movements um, of individuals in relation to their head um, and so that's precisely what we're doing and today we're doing it with uh, some very innovative camera and computer technologies and uh, it's continuing to grow. Okay, so you guys are leveraging camera te camera technologies and other innovative technologies that you and your team have developed. That's you know right now. But what about in the past? Is eye tracking a new thing, or is eye tracking been going on for quite some time? It's been going on for quite a while, and there's a lot of history behind it. Um, for centuries, from what we know, uh, centuries going back, people have been measuring and trying to understand how the eyes move and what that means to the brain and everything that's going on. Um, but it's only been over probably the past 50 years that uh, we've been doing real-time eye tracking uh, with computers and uh, video camera technology. Um, so there's a difference. One was you know analyzing and doing all the post analysis where we were understanding the science behind it and now um, over the last 50 years we've developed technologies that can do it in real time which enables us to interact with things It enables us to use the eyes as targeting devices or another input device for instance okay so you mentioned how it used to be done and now how you guys are doing it now you know please go into a little more um, you know detail as far as the different technologies what you're using it for I'd love to hear about some practical current day uses of eye tracking certainly so today what we do is we use uh, a method called pupil center corneal reflection which essentially means we have cameras that are mounted in the environment whether they're under a monitor whether they're in a three-dimensional space and what they do is they use a little bit of infrared light to illuminate your eye so what we do is we get the reflection off your uh, we basically create that bright eye pupil effect that you see in old flash photography um, and that enables us to find the center of your pupil and then we can find the reflection uh, from those LED, those infrared LEDs off your cornea uh, and that's how we're able to do the math and figure out precisely where your eye is pointed um, and so that in, you know that set aside you know there's a tremendous amount of wide range of applications that this stuff is used in um, we've been doing it for about 26 years now and uh, we started off in the business actually uh, working with uh, the disabled community so building assistive technologies technologies that enable folks that are quadriplegics to actually control um, and and use their computer so they can type they can send emails they can you know go to work now because they're able to communicate with the outside world um, and and it's gone more so into you know as time's gone on into the research community uh, the neuroscience community psycholinguistics or psychology that sort of thing Wow I love hearing these practical uses. I mean, you know, the handicapped community leveraging technology, leveraging eye tracking to improve their lives. It's a really good story to tell. It is. It is. And, um, you know, that's really the, the most rewarding work um, in regards to the technology. Um, but there's so many more applications that are coming out from security to usability or web usability, um, advertising research. Um, you know all the way to hopefully someday interacting with your own personal computer in a different way um, by using your eyes as say your mouse for instance so um, we'd like to think that rather than having to use your hand to move the mouse around the screen your eyes are already there so we could use a combination of that with a few buttons on the keyboard um, and you can start interacting with your displays very very much more uh, fluently really cool stuff one of the things that you mentioned earlier real time that you guys are tracking these eye movements and all this stuff in real time. How are you tracking it? What does it look like? Really, I'd love to kind of see what this real-time data and analytics are looking like. Certainly. So 
Um, what I could do is show you a few examples here. Now, this isn't necessarily real time. This is actually a photograph of what actually happened. But um, using a, a, a software, a couple software programs that we have, um, you can see here this is an actual image of a subject that was looking at uh, Amazon's website, for instance. And each one of these little dots is an indication of where the subject looked for a period of time. And the size of those dots are indicating how long they looked there. Um, and we can pull all sorts of other information, whether it's um, pupil diameter, um, whether it's um, you know the actual gaze point. There's a lot of different things that we can pull, um, but that is you know in terms of it being real time, it's it's us being able to actually essentially turn the eyes into a cursor on the screen. I mean that's essentially what the computer thinks it is. Wow. We love screenshots here on Rothman Tech Tips. We love it. Show us what you got. We want to see some of these analytics, some of these requirements or whatever it is that you guys have gathered looking at our eyes. Let's do it. So Matt, as I mentioned here, this is the, um, the scan path of Amazon's website uh, that, we, that we showed here. And what this is, is these, these little dots that I spoke about, this is the um, in real time what happened at that event as the subject was looking on the screen. Um, so we have the circles in different sizes. Those are the indicating the, the duration that the subject was looking. Um, and then, uh, you know, as the eye moved and fixated around the screen, this is precisely what gathered or what grabbed the subject's attention. Okay, so I see these yellow blotches, yellow circles with the green lines. That is just where our eyes are going on the website. That's correct. That's correct. And there's a few numbers within those dots. The first number is the order that that fixation took place. And the second number is in milliseconds how long that subject looked there. Um, so we're recording all this information. We're recording um, the mouse events. So what is the mouse doing? And also all the keyboard strokes on the, on the keyboard. So um, from Amazon's point of view, they want to say, tell a subject, hey, find this particular product, um, and they simply are recording precisely what the subject's doing, what they're looking at. Did they get distracted by certain material on the screen? Or, you know, they're asking themselves a the question, is there a way that we can optimize this display to get that information across to you in a more effective manner? Really cool stuff here. I mean, I see that sort of thing. It looks like you know, one of those futuristic movies, those James Bond type stuff, and it looks like now it, it's, it, it's come to fruition. We really have the technology to do this stuff. That's it. You're right. Um, and Matt, here's another example, the same information, but this is what we call a heat map. So rather than showing all the various fixations, we're showing the areas that gathered the most attention. So where you see these little, these red circles with the yellow outlines, that's showing where the person's attention predominantly uh, stayed within that within that page. Um, so this is really a cool visual representation of what grabbed the subject's attention. Got it. Okay, well that's really cool stuff. Now, the technology, you know, what you guys are doing, is it hardware, is it software? You know, really, how are you guys gathering this data? Tell me about the, the solution that you guys have. Gotcha. So it's, um, it's a combination of both. So if you can see here, um, this is our device called the iFollower. And so the, you see the monitor on top, and then below this monitor is our eye, eye tracking device. Uh, and there's a total of four cameras within this device. Basically what we do is we find where you are in space. Uh, so we locate where your eyes are. And then behind that sheet of black glass here, just below the monitor, we have two telephoto cameras um, with infrared LEDs mounted on them. Um, and they are literally following and lock on to your eyes. Um, and so what we're doing is, as I mentioned before, the pupil center corneal reflection method. We know where all this, all this stuff exists, and we're measuring all the, the three-dimensional aspects of where you are, where the system is. And that enables us to precisely measure where you're looking on the screen. So this is the actual hardware component and then we have a PC that actually runs the device um, and that's running all of our analysis software, all of our image processing software um, uh, side by side. Got it. So it's an all-in-one hardware and software unit. We have the monitor on the top and on the bottom we have all the cameras and then all the software embedded. That's it. 
That's really cool. I really like that technology. Uh, I was hoping you could maybe talk us through just a recent project or a recent client that you've worked with and really kind of walk us through the, uh, the, the issues that you guys solved. So there's a, there's a wide range of, of industries that we work in. Matt, um, but one of the most, uh, you know, I would say most interesting to me is really the security field at the moment. Um, and so we're working with a few clients. One client, for instance, we're doing uh, a attention to task or human failure analysis. So what we do is we sleep deprive uh, subjects for five days at a time. They get four hours of sleep a night. Um, and then they run through a 500 bag TSA simulator. And so what we're doing is we're recording the eyes, we're recording all the different variations, the pupils, the gaze, path, um, and then we record precisely when, you know, when does that subject fail? When can we start putting some bad things to the TSA simulator? Um, and hope, the hope is in the future that we can take a look at those, uh, those metrics and then create an intelligent software that could literally uh, be looking at um, TSA scanners in every airport across the country and be able to say, okay, you know, Bob's about to fail, for instance. We need to get him off that machine. We can see what his eyes are doing. He looks like he's tired. He looks like he's about to fail, and he's not paying attention, essentially. Um, so that is something that is, is, has a tremendous initiative um, and could really impact the way that we, uh, we as humans interact with computers. Really cool stuff. Uh, you know, I just recently did some traveling, and going through the TSA and going through the security, I definitely see that as a place where eye tracking and this technology can definitely be leveraged. So that's a really cool example. Excellent, excellent. So John, you know, I really appreciate you coming on the program here, educating us. I really like that whiteboard behind you there. Oh, yeah. What are you guys doing on there? Well, you know, an IT man's favorite thing is the whiteboard. What are you guys doing on that whiteboard behind you? You know, it's just, it's basic brainstorming, Matt. You know, we, uh, we tend to break off into sessions here and just kind of do some daily learning if we can. So we get our, our high-end developers in here and they teach all us young guys what's going on, what's the state of the art. Um, so it's really just a lot of brainstorming. But, uh, yeah, you're right, IT's favorite best friend. There we go. Developers are, are all over that whiteboard. So, John, before I let you go, we got to do the I don't cook portion of the vlog. Mm -hmm. Please tell me, please tell the audience, what is your favorite restaurant here in the Washington, D.C. area? Favorite restaurant? Um, you know, there's obviously a lot of great food in the city, Matt. Um, but my my favorite spot is really uh, Southern Hospitality in, in Adams Morgan, uh, Soho, uh, D.C. Um, great food, great ambiance, wonderful people, and uh, you know, really just warm country style food. And uh, yeah, that's that's my recommendation. Okay, Southern Hospitality in Adams Morgan. What is your favorite dish? What's your favorite thing on the menu? I'm going to have to say the steak and asparagus salad. I know uh, that might not be the, the go-to for everybody, but it's, it's, the, it's absolutely delicious. It's great. Okay. As a man, it's hard to say a salad is your favorite meal, but I guess because there's steak in there, I'll give you a pass. Yeah. So Southern Hospitality and Adams Morgan and the steak and asparagus salad is your great. favorite dish. That's it. All right. Well, thank you for coming on the program, John. Uh, you educated me, you educated my audience on eye tracking, and I really appreciate it. I'd love to have you on the, uh, the vlog at, at a future time. Thanks for having us, Matt. We really appreciate it. All right. This is Rothman Tech Tips.